Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Today our focus is going to be on the company PayPal, ticker PYPL. And I'm sure many of you have a PayPal account. Now I did do a video back in October on this company and at that time the stock was trading around $50, $51. And though I felt it was a good price to buy in at, I held off believing it would drop into the $40 range, which never happened. And since then it's gone up about 20%. So now I'm updating my valuation based on the trailing 12 months to include the third quarter of 2023. And I'll be updating it again when they release their fiscal year 2023 results. So consider subscribing if you want to track my valuations for PayPal. Now in this video, we're going to look at PayPal's financials, perform a stock valuation. And at the end of the video, we're going to go into computer modeling to forecast the 52 week stock movement. Now, I did recently buy into this company based on my most updated valuation. So we're going to look at my recent purchases first. So let's jump right into it. Here are my recent purchases into PayPal, which I just started building this week. And my current cost basis is $61.29. So I'm actually down slightly about a half a percent. While if I purchased the S&P 500 index during these days, I would be slightly ahead. And towards the bottom here is my actual position size. So I currently have 85 shares while investing about $5,200. And I will look at adding more shares over the next few weeks based on the stock price movement. But let's move on now and we'll get into their financials. Here we have the financials for PayPal. And I'll point out the far right hand bar in each graph just represents the trail in 12 months of the first three quarters of 2023 and Q4 of 2022. And we can see there looking at revenue in the top left, it has grown every year over the past 10 years. Now, the only thing is the most recent two years uh, for 2022 and the trailing 12 months, we can see that growth has cooled off. Uh, previously, it was at least 15 percent or higher, but um, 2022 was eight and a half percent and trailing 12 months, almost six percent. So that has cooled off. But still, it has grown over time. The net income, you can see there, a little choppy, especially 2022, had that big drop off uh, down about 42%. But trailing 12 months, trying to pick it back up just over 55%. So nice to see there. We'll see what happens when they release their uh, 2023 full year results and see if that gets ticked up a little higher. And then earnings per share on the top right kind of matches uh, net income, as you would expect. We see that drop off again in 2022, down 40%, but trailing 12 months, nice recovery, up 60%. Book value has pretty much been growing over the last 10 years. Uh, they don't pay any dividends. And then shares, we can see that's been on the decline over the uh, same time period, and especially the trail in 12 months, we can see they bought back almost 7% of the uh, outstanding stock over the trailing 12 months. So I really like seeing companies, especially well-established companies like PayPal. They've been in the public markets for at least 10 years. And before that, they were part of uh, eBay. But it's nice to see they're buying back uh, their shares, reducing that outstanding share count. And then free cash flow and free cash flow per share. We can see this is a little choppy here and trailing 12 months is negative. I know it's something the uh, new CEO of PayPal is going to work on along with improving their uh, margins to help improve that net income. We looked at a moment ago, but when we go over to the revenue per share, we can see here, just like revenue, it has grown nicely, especially since they're buying back shares and revenue has grown over the past 10 years. We see this is up and to the right. This is what you really want to see on these uh, bar graphs, everything going up and to the right. But let's move on and we'll actually perform a stock valuation. There we have the valuation for PayPal, and I am going to make a modification to this in a moment, but this initial setup shows the valuation just under $68 with an 85% margin of safety. That brings it down to $58. Now, this is based on an 8% short-term growth rate over the next 10 years with a 10% discount rate, and I am using a 3% long-term growth rate. Now, what I do want to point out is this net income. The CAGR over the last 10 years is actually quite high, almost 28%. And I'm only using an 8% growth rate. And the reason why I initially put in 8% is because we saw uh, the trailing 12 months, that net income definitely dropped, dropped off from what it was previously. But I think moving forward, they're going to be able to uh, tick that back up and get up to at least 10%, maybe even higher, 
but I'm going to change his 8% to 10%. We're going to see how that impacts the valuation. Uh, and currently the stock is trading about uh, $60. And we can see here the uh, initial valuation was just under $60 in that $58 range up to $68. But let's see the impact when we move it to a 10% to a short term growth rate. And we can see here intrinsic value jumped up to just under $80. And with that same 85% margin of safety, bringing it down to about $68. And as I mentioned, stocks currently trading about $60. So I think this is a good opportunity to buy in. As I showed you earlier, I bought in and I do plan on trying to buy in some more over the coming weeks and build up my position, maybe getting up to 10,000 or slightly over. And a few other data points I like to point out. First is return on invested capital. And we can see for these time periods, Typically averaging over 10%, except for the uh, one year where it slightly fell off to 8%. And I like seeing companies having a return on invested capital 10% or higher. This is an important metric for an investor to look at. And the other one to point out is sales growth. And just like return on invested capital, it was averaging 10%, except for the one year where we could see the drop off to 6%. Now, new CEO is claiming that PayPal is still a growth company. So I'm looking forward for this sales growth to return to this 10% or higher uh, averages as we start moving forward. And a few other data points I want to point out. I'm going to scroll down for a moment. PE ratio, just over 18. So I think it's in that value opportunity range being just under 20. Then a long-term debt to free cash flow. So I typically like seeing companies under three. We can see they're slightly above it, but we do know their free cash flow dropped off over the tw uh, trailing 12 months. So hopefully moving forward, that free cash flow ticks back up and we can see this number getting back under three. And then shares, as we saw in the bar graph, they've been buying back shares over the last 10 years. And in total, they bought back almost 12%. And I am looking forward to seeing their next earnings results to see how many more shares they bought back because I believe this is going to drop even more based on the uh, current stock price. And then net profit margin. I like seeing companies over 10% and we can see here for the last 10 years, they averaged 13 and the last three years just under 13%. So great data points overall for PayPal. And I do think this is an opportunity. And as you saw, I'm buying into it. And I hope to build my position even more over the next coming weeks. We're going to move on to the computer modeling and first i'm going to show you the results that i did back in october for the computer modeling and how they panned out and then we'll look at updating those results for the next 52 weeks here are results of the computer modeling when i analyzed paypal back in october and in blue that's the m5 rule method we see that's pretty bearish in green is random forest which was a lot more optimistic and in yellow was just the average of the two and at that time, the stock was trading around $53 a share. And I'm going to add another line. It's going to be a red line, which indicates the actual stock price movement since I performed that valuation in October. With the actual stock price in red and comparing it to the computer modeling, we can see computer modeling was initially more bullish, at least for the first several weeks following that prediction. But eventually, the stock price act, uh, caught up to it. And as of today, the stock is trading at $61.35. And we can see here, it's pretty much in line with the, with the green line for Random Forest, which that prediction had at this time $61.50. So pretty close. Uh, M5 rule, as we see here, was a lot more bearish by this time and, and showing the stock price starting to drop. And the M5 rule had the price at $58.10. And then the yellow line, the average would be right in the middle at $59.80. So right now, this is looking like it's tracking random forest at the uh, at, at that prediction of $61.50. And the stock is currently at $61.35. So let's move on. And I'm going to perform a new computer modeling based on initial data from end of October until where we are today in early January. Here in the computer modeling software, I already ran the analysis using the two methods that I mentioned. Uh, first is the M5 rule shown here, and the other is random forest. Now, this takes into account the data from that October time period when I performed the previous analysis to where, where we are today, uh, January, in early January. And this data is as of January 8th. And the far right-hand column is the 
average weekly stock price movement for PayPal. And we can see here, it was uh, just over $61. And the column right next to it is the S&P 500 ETF and other columns are just other various data points used for the analysis. And same thing, I already copied all these results and pasted it into Excel. And we'll go over there in a moment as it's a little easier to see. But let's just scroll down real quick just to get a quick peek on what the forecast is showing. And again, this is for the M5 rule. And we can see here, out in 52 weeks in the early part of 2025, it's actually showing just a slight decline, looking like uh, just over $60. Remember from the previous analysis, it was a lot, it was more bearish. And so this is maybe more of a positive sign for the M5 rule. Uh, though it doesn't show a gain, it's not really showing a, uh, a, a significant stock price drop. But let's jump over to Random Forest just to see how that prediction uh, is updated. And same thing, this data is as of January 8th, and we're going to scroll down. And we can see here it's still. Uh, bullish actually hitting $88. I believe the previous analysis had it in the uh, mid 70s. So a little more, uh, a little more bullish than, than the previous one. But let's jump over into Excel and look at all this on the graph. Back in Excel, I already have all the data from the computer modeling pasted in. And first thing I point out is the vertical red line just represents this previous Monday, January 8th. And everything to the left of that vertical red line is the historical stock price movement. And everything to the right is the forecasted. And we can just take a quick look at the historical stock price. We can see back in 2020 and into 2021 and early part of 2022, the stock was up around that $300 mark. And then we can see it has the steep decline and it declined ever since until we where we are today in early January. Now I'm going to jump over to another tab. I'm going to look at the new forecasts a little closer. So looking at the M5 rule first, we're going to look at the blue line to the right of that vertical red line. And what we're seeing here is really just a flat outlook for PayPal uh, for this year. And if you remember from the previous modeling that we did for the M5 rule, that was more bearish and, and it showed a pretty steep or a declining stock price over, uh, over this year. So it's nice to see with the new data added that it's showing a little more optimistic based on the previous one, but pretty flat though for this year. So let's go on and look at the random forest. As we noted, that's a little more uh, bullish. So let's take a look. Now looking at random forest, and as we noted, there's a lot more optimism based on this method. And looking out the 52 weeks, it's shown a slight increase in stock price. And then probably out in around July, August time period, it starts predicting that it's going to shoot up uh, even more. And out in early part of January 2025, it's predicting the stock price to be around $88 or so. And if this does play out, that would be an increase in the stock price of about 44, 45%. Now let's just jump over, we'll just take a look at the average. Now looking at the average of the two methods, M5 rule and Random Forest, obviously it's gonna be somewhere in the middle. And looking out 52 weeks, it's showing the stock to be probably in the 74, $75 range, which would be a gain of about 20%, maybe 21% or so. To recap, with my recent stock price valuation, I purchased it into PayPal, as I believe a fair value to buy the stock is between $57 and up to the mid $60 range. And this does take into account a margin of safety, with the current stock price trading in the low 60s. For the computer modeling, the random forest method still has an optimistic outlook for the stock, as I did back in October, with the latest prediction having the stock forecast in January 2025 at around $88. So I hope you enjoyed the video and got some useful information. If so, consider subscribing. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.